Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Marketing Podcast, your source for all things marketing. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Laura Carr on the line, and she's a digital marketing strategist. Laura, welcome to the show. Thanks. Great to be here. So uh, excited about today's topic, Laura. So content marketing, how to scale and make it work harder for your brand. A lot of business owners, entrepreneurs, and executives right now listening, and uh, they want to definitely do that. But um, before we get into that, I want to talk a little bit more about your background. So how did you get started in your career and in marketing? Yeah, so I'm actually still pretty fresh in my career. Um, I, I got started when I was working on my MBA. Um, and I got a graduate assistantship in the university marketing department. So I served as a marketing strategist uh, where I had a group of clients within the university where I would promote different, um, different, different parts of the school, different programs, things like that, mainly outside of the digital world. And then from there, um, I got my first position with actually a construction company doing a lot of um, non traditional marketing uh, materials, same thing where I was really focused on, on the content. I was really benefit, it was beneficial because I was able to uh, work on the, a new website that they were building. So that kind of got me interested in the digital world. And then from there, I knew that, okay, this is the path I want to take. Traditional marketing is super important. I love it. I still want to be involved in it, but this digital world is not going away. So from there, I was in a marketing writer role for a bit and then um, actually landed with a social media agency where I first had the role of an account manager where I, I did a lot of project management, a lot of client services, lots of content for various clients, and then most recently had a role where I was the content director and managed all the content that we put out of the door. And that's where I got really excited because it really made me think about how important content is for clients and brands and basically anybody out there that's putting anything on the internet or just anything out there for anyone to see. Yeah, that's exciting. Um, and I think, and that, and that's, that's why today's topic is so important. I love how you started in uh, more, more traditional marketing and then really fell in love with content marketing is what happened. And that's why I want you on the show talking about this. So um, content marketing, how to scale and make it work harder for your brand. I mean, where do you want to start with that topic? Yeah, so I think the, the biggest thing that I've noticed, a, a big trend, is that content can be daunting. People think that the business owners a lot of times brands, you know, they think they need to be pumping out a ton of content, multiple posts a day, multiple emails a day. And unless you're a, a pretty big brand with a, a full-scale marketing team, that might not be super realistic. So sometimes what's more important, actually this is always important, is taking a step back and really thinking about what does your audience care about. So it's it's less about, you know, let's just pump out a million different messages, a million different pieces of content, let's take a step back and really look at our audience. You might have people in their 40s and 50s on a marketing team advertising to 20-year-olds. So what the 40 and 50-year-olds think is cool and would resonate with the audience might not necessarily be true unless they really do a deep dive. So that's, that's kind of my biggest thing where I think, it, I think that's the most important thing that marketers and business owners need to do is and and especially with you know people who might be a little bit younger like like myself I'm still pretty young in my career a lot of times I'm marketing to an older audience so it's like okay what do they care about do they care about things that are cost effective do they care about things that are going to save them time what do they care about that's going to really honestly develop your content your messaging everything that you put out there and. The biggest thing as part of that is you have to talk about how you're going to transform someone's life. And that could be, you know, a, a bottle of water, a, a brand of water. This brand of water is going to make you feel so refreshed and change your life the first time that you drink it. No matter what the product is, it's important to think about that messaging versus just putting out facts and information about your product. It's 
why does your customer why does your prospective customer care about your product? Why why should they care about it? So that's if that's like the most important thing that I could tell marketers to do. Um and then second, you know, the scaling part, um we don't need to necessarily have to have a whole bunch of unique content. Yes, we want everything to be different, but a lot of times what I what I found is companies and brands they want to like reinvent the wheel every single time they do a new piece of content. That's not necessarily true. You can work off of it, or that's not necessarily what needs to happen. You can work off of templates where you just like plug and play images. You can you know just plug and play the the copy, and that that's what helps scale the content where you can you could put out a bunch of different things, you could put out a couple of very unique things, but that's kind of how I look at scaling content. Let's work off of templates. Or let's work off of things that can be entertained, swapped in, swapped out, but ultimately will deliver the same message to our to our prospective audience. And quite honestly, your prospective audience, it, it, it does a good job, when you work off of templates like that, it does a good job of creating like almost a brand persona and people will start recognizing you. They'll start recognizing that email template that comes into their inbox. They'll start recognizing your posts on social media. They'll recognize any like direct mail that comes in the mail. So it's not always necessary to reinvent the wheel and use all that brain power. I would recommend let's put that let's put that energy and investment into the messaging about how we're going to transform the customer's life versus how how are we going to break through a brand new design. Now with that, brand new design, brand new content is important, but maybe look at that once a quarter, once every other month. Something that doesn't that ultimately doesn't take you spending so much time and energy and your resources creating new content on a weekly or daily basis. Because that can be really time consuming. What should uh, brands be thinking about when they think about um, content and, and platform? So, like, what what platform they should be posting on? Give give us your thoughts on that one. Sure. So it all goes back to I, as part of developing messaging for your prospective customer. There's I, I use a really awesome worksheet where you you actually list out where your customer is seeking information. Are they looking in magazines? Are they looking on social media? Are they looking in their emails? Where are they looking? And specifically, if they're looking on social media, where are they at? You know, 50 and 60 year olds, probably not on Snapchat and TikTok. But whereas, you know, 20 and 30 year olds, they might be on several different platforms. So it's really part of that effort of, um, of thinking about where your audience is at. Now, it's also important to think about the types of content that you're putting on those platforms. For 20 and 30 year olds, Instagram is, is, Extremely important. I would say that's where that's where the bulk of people spend their time. Anything older than that, I would say Facebook is probably the most important. Twenty and under, um, I would say Snapchat and TikTok are are going to be super important for you to have content on. Um, and I'm keeping my eye on TikTok because I don't know what's going to happen there, but I'm excited to see what what comes out of it. But yeah, it's really all about just step, taking a step back and thinking about where is my audience, where is my audience. Con- content? Where do they care about content the most? It, it might even be just display ads through Google. Um, they might just spend a lot of time searching the internet or, you know, something like that. So it's all about like market research that takes place before you actually create the content to figure out where where people are at and where they're consuming it. That's awesome. So, Laura, if somebody is listening to this and they want more information on your work or to or to follow you, um, what's the best way for them to reach out? Yeah, sure. So they could hit me up on LinkedIn. Um, either search Laura Carr or go to uh, LinkedIn.com slash Laura Carr and then the number 34. Fantastic. Well, Laura, it's been great having you on the show today, and uh, thank you for sharing with the audience more about your views on content marketing, how to scale and make it work harder for your brand. Um, and to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. 
Hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, uh, leave me a review on the Apple iTunes store, and if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, Mission Matters Marketing, definitely give us a subscribe there and uh, let us know what you thought. Love to hear some comments in the video and uh, keep the com- the conversation going over on YouTube. And Laura, thanks again for coming on the show. Yeah, thanks so much for having me.